Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to start with a scripture that I've been sharing with you the last couple of weeks. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it cometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. So I pray that as we live as Christians and the places we go and the things that we do, that will always be a blessing that people can see Christ through us. And uh, when we have the opportunity, we certainly want to share what Christ has done for us. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, again, we just thank you for who you are. We love you. We thank you for loving us. Father, you're just with us. You meet our needs. You watch over us. You protect us. And Father, we just thank you. Man. We probably can't thank you enough for what you do and the things that we have because of you. But we love you and we do thank you for what, what's been done and what is being done. So Father, we pray for our church. We pray for our pulpit committee as we hopefully will meet this week and um, try to figure out what you have for us to do. Um, but Father, we want to be pleased to you and we want the man that you would have to come and to lead us and to watch over us. So Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for um, the opportunity to come and meet in your house and we look into your word. And Father, as we come, then we'll set those things that might be on our minds or on our hearts to the side that we want to focus on you this morning. That as we come and as we hear your word, that we can grow stronger and be more, <clears throat> more powerful for you during the week <coughs> so that we can serve you, that we can reach out. Oh, there's so many who have needs, so many who are looking for the truth. And it's through your word that we can share and see people come to know you. So Father, just use us wherever we are, wherever we go. Um, to be with that church, with the folks from that still can't get out, we ask you to be with them. And Father, just use us wherever we are for your glory, that we can always praise and lift up your name. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Amen.
few announcements this morning. Um, Judy Blair lost her brother, I think, last hmm. week, so we want to remember the Blair family. Uh, for, for what I heard, Jerry was old and doing well, so that's a blessing. Uh, Doug Fender lost his mom this week also. Uh, they will have the service at Lally's up here on Staples Mill. Uh, visitation from 1 to 2, and then the service starting at 2 o'clock. Tomorrow. Sorry? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, Monday. I knew that. Y'all didn't know that? <laughs> uh, like I said, I have a good mind. It's short. But yeah, tomorrow at Blotley's uh, for Brother Doug's mom. Um, good to have Margaret Jones back with us. Good to see her. Uh, is there any other prayer requests I might be missing? We need to remember our shut in. I've had a chance to talk with uh, John and Jennifer and doing at this point as well as possible. John's still in some pain, so they're still working with him. And Jennifer is looking for another hip replacement. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're trying to get that set up. It might be another month or so before they actually, uh, that if that actually happens. <coughs> uh, <coughs> you were talking to Mary Smith and She's doing well, and um, I just want to remember her in prayer. And I haven't had a chance to talk with Wendy, but the last time I knew she was doing well. Um, need to pray for it. Looks like some of the food is still not suggesting for working like it ought to. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Wendy has an, a doctor's appointment tomorrow at MCV or BCU, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with, I think it's a uh, pancreatic addict doctor, I'm not sure, but she needs our prayers, really yeah. strong prayers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just remember that she does have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. I heard a voice. Brother George, if I may, I've got a testimony I'd like to tell everybody. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, here in the last, oh, I guess about four or five months, there's a lot of things that are happening in and around my family and other people's families. And uh, I pray to the Lord with all my heart and soul that uh, He would help these folks. I ask for Him to uh, make them well and uh, bring them bring them back because a couple of them were on the verge of uh, of death. And, uh, and He did it for Three people, mm -hmm. and I want everybody to know that the power of prayer is alive and well and strong. Amen. And without the Lord Amen. doing it, it wouldn't happen. Amen. Praise God. And uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you, brother. Yeah, I think one of the things sometimes we maybe don't lean on as, as hard as we should is prayer, and God will answer our prayer. Uh, as far as any announcements, the only thing we have would be our morning matter. It's coming Wednesday. Uh, and then uh, Bible study with Brother Scott on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. If you haven't come to that, we have a good time. We have a chance to share. And so uh, come out and be with us. Uh, enjoy what God has for you when you come. All right. Uh, with that, I guess we'll take up our offering. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, as Harry said, you are the, the great physician, you are the great healer, Lord, you're a comforter. Lord, at times I feel like I beg for fairness, but you gave me favor, which is even better. Lord God, through this tithing, let it be a process this week and every day of tithing, of giving back to the local church, and giving to you, and giving to others, and showing our obedience through your Son, Jesus Christ. In your beautiful name, amen. Amen. amen.
that trumps all of this was this day what happened in Genesis chapter 3 when sin entered into the world. And that's what happened right here. And now, the problems that we face in this world, the problems that we face, the problems every day, stuff that we have to deal with every day, all goes back to what happened on this day. Because on this day, sin entered into the world, and we were living on a, basically a cemetery. I mean, where you go, you go back into, I'll jump ahead to uh, John chapter 11, where, when uh, Lazarus had died, and Jesus said, you know, was encouraging them, but they were saying, if you'd only been there, if you'd only been there, and, it's, and the Bible says, and Jesus wept. Now, why did Jesus weep? It wasn't simply because of Lazarus, Lazarus, because he was getting ready to raise him from the dead. It was a whole human predicament. That we have to deal with sin. That we have to deal, as a result, death. Their problems. I mean, I hear, the, I hear the prayer request. I hear uh, the announcements um, today that people are, are sick. People were, are dying. People are going through all kinds of trials and tribulations. And it is all because we live in a fallen world. And it's just before, before this point, there, were, there wasn't any death. There was, it was, it was everything was, it was working the way God had, had made it. And it was, but one thing was, God told them, you can eat anything in this garden except for one. One thing. You go to um, verse 17 in chapter 2. It says, And of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat, it, eat of it, for the day that you, thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And we see, we see something here that takes place. First of all, we see the serpent. We see in verse um, 1, Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now he says he was more subtle. Now, the world portrays the devil. When they think of the devil, they might you might see something with a pitchfork and horns or something scary and vile to look at that, be, that you have nightmares about. But that's not what we see right here. What we see right here, he's more subtle. The devil is a roaring lion seeking to let me devour. But he also comes in sheep's clothing. He also comes, he looks, he looks innocent. He, he might even look like something that's good. And um, first, 2 Corinthians 11, 14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So the devil, he, he is he is deceitful, he is deceitful, and he is he doesn't come as, as the devil at any time. If he did, people wouldn't be deceived. Well, most people wouldn't be. But the thing is, that's not how the devil operates. Everything that God has given us that is good, he, he counterfeits. He will, he will make it something good. There are, many, there are many churches that are out there and they're preaching, but they're not preaching the gospel. To, uh, they're not preaching the gospel. They're saying, you can live your best life now. That is not what the, that's not what the, um, you know, that's not what the um, Bible teaches. I mean, I think of many, many, um, many, um, there was an instance where this one man, there was a funeral for a man. He had been, um, He'd been in the biker gang, and he was, and he was, he had done drugs, and everything had happened in his life. And but the preacher said, you know what? He sowed his wild oats in his life, but when he was a little kid, he prayed this prayer and accepted Jesus Christ, and that's why he's in heaven today. Well, the thing is about that, you're not saved simply by praying a prayer and just doing what you want to do. You know, um, you know, it's kind of like this. I heard an evangelist by the his name was Paul Washington. And he he was telling a story how his he was going to have lunch with his mother after she went to the doctor. So he takes her to the doctor, and the doctor says, Ms. Washer, you've got cancer. And it's bad. And he said that that doctor made my what made my mom cry. He ruined her afternoon. He ruined her day. He ruined her week. But if he had not told her what was really going on and what she needed to do, what the treatments needed to be, 
he would have been kicked out of his practice. You know, there are a lot of preachers that are filling pulpits today. They need to be kicked out of their practice. They're not preaching the truth. They are deceiving people. And the devil is using them. The devil is subtle. He appears to be something good. He may appear to be something lovely. And they say, oh, this is so good. But he's also transformed into an angel of life. And yet at the same time, he's a roaring lion seeking who he may, may devour. But also, this serpent, the devil, he was, he was a deceiver. He was, he was, he, he just, all about, I mean, it doesn't seem that Eve was afraid of him. See, it wasn't something scary as a serpent. And probably when we think, oh, a serpent. But probably this serpent was not like when we think of a serpent. It was probably something that was, I mean, God had made it. We didn't have to see sin and not enter into the world. And it was, she was off, she was just having a conversation with the serpent. But the thing was, he was a deceiver. And he, and he, and the, and the devil is always a deceiver. And he will always counterfeit. He will make things look good. And he, I mean, even, you know, even the way we look at the world, a lot of times he uses a lot of false philosophies of this world. For instance, you might even say, maybe in a religious circle, say, God only helps those who help themselves. Well, you know what? You can't help yourself. Only God can do that. And you need to lean, lean upon Him and trust in Him. But see, the, the subtle things. But we look at the, look at the, um, look at the, um, the, the sermon that the devil preached. In verse, um, you go in verse 2. And, and the serpent, and the, what, at first we see, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall surely not die. Now listen, she said, You can't even touch it. She said that God had not. He said, you can't touch it. God didn't say that. You go back to verse 17. He doesn't say anything about touching it. He's about eating. And this is where you can get a, where the devil can get a foothold. If you take away from Scripture, but also if you add to it. And we're warned in Revelation uh, that, about taking away from the Word of God. And we're, talk, we're warned about adding to the Word of God. There are people out there who, who like to add to the Word of God. Now, this, this, the preacher was misunderstood, but he, he got up there and at Bible college years ago, and he, and he preached, I'm going to take this passage to a higher spiritual thing. And people were thinking, I didn't know you could improve on, improve on the Bible. <laughs> um, but, but, but the thing was, he, was, he said he was going to take a little deeper, but the way he worded it. But there are a lot of preachers out there, a lot of teachers, who want to add to Scripture and say, well, this is what God meant right there. Well, if, it's, you, if you're comparing Scripture to Scripture, yeah. But a lot of times people want to explain things away. You know, when Samson, when he killed all those Philistines with a jawbone of a mule, I believe that he killed all those people with a jawbone of a mule, as the Bible said. I mean, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, I believe he meant it. But you know what? There's some people who say, well, God has many nicknames. Sometimes He comes in the name of Allah or His other name. Or there are many paths to God. That's of the devil. It is devilish. There's only one path to God. That's through Jesus Christ. And when we come to Him in childlike faith, that is the only way into heaven. I remember one of um, friends from Bible college, he said, well, all roads do lead to, the, how, um, to, um, to God. The judgment of God if, if you're, um, but there's only one way you will get into heaven. That's through Jesus Christ. But see, what does the devil attack in this sermon? He attacks the Word of God. The devil says, "Did God really say? Did God really say that? Did God really say that homosexuality is wrong? Did God say that He created man and woman? Did God?" God really say there's a heaven and there's a hell? Did God really say 
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Did God really say that He died on the cross for our sins? See, the devil wanted to bring a question mark. Now, I know some people might have some questions, and that's, and that's healthy when you have some questions where you want to learn, but that devil, the devil can also use that question mark and make it a look and, 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 and draw you into his, his little world. So he attacked the Word of God. You know, um, but he not only attacked the Word of God, he, he attacked the will of God. And that's what, one thing that the devil can do too. He can say, well, you know, God, you know, you know, you can do what you want to do. You know, you, you're your own person, you're your own man, you're your own, your own woman. You can, you can do what you want to do. You can be whatever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. Well, not if it's not according to God's will. God wants us to be in His will. One of the things, and even in the innocent way, a lot of people might be in, in um, churches, in churches or growing up in churches, and what is God's will for my life? That's, I mean, that sounds like a good question, but the problem with that is sometimes if you ask the wrong question, you're going to get the wrong answer. The question should be, what is God's will? Because God is not willing that any should perish, but they all come to repentance. Number one, I can tell you what God's will is. You get saved. And if you're saved, you've done one of the things that God, that you're in His will as far as salvation goes. But now the other things, where do we fit into that as far as the Great Commission? How do we, how do we share the gospel? What's our role in sharing the gospel? Whether he's calling you to be a preacher, is he calling you to be a Sunday school teacher, or he might be calling you to work in the workplace to be a witness for him. Whatever, whatever he, he's got a call on your life, that is his will. But it all centered around his plan for this whole world is that note that he's not willing that any should perish, but they all come to repentance. Yeah. But the devil wants to attack that. He said, "No, Eve. You know, it's you know what? We go back. We go back to it. And the serpent said to the woman, "You know, you shall not die." And see, she he attacked the word of God, the will of God, but also the wisdom of God. There's one thing about God. He's wise. He knows what's best. The problem is a lot of times we, we think we know what's best. And a lot of times with people, we want to draw God into our world, but we need to go into God's world. We need to, we need to do His will and do what He wants us to do. And, and, the, and the thing was, God, you know, He, uh, he did attack the Word of God. And, he, um, and you know, like, as John, John um, W. Phillips said, Eve conceded that God had prohibited the eating of the tree of knowledge of God and evil. We do not know if God directly no, you know, stated the pro a prohibition to Eve or, or if Adam passed along to her. Regardless, she distorted God's word. First, she added that prohibition. Um, she added that prohibition. They were not even allowed to even touch the forbidden tree. Second, she subtracted the penalty, you will die, and is less forceful in the Hebrew than God's statement that you shall surely die. The devil, you know, he denied the word of God, and then he put, you know, all these question marks. So he 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 tried to he he got he, this is how he's a deceiver. He will he will try to deceive you into question what um is that does the Bible really say this? Then he'll start to say, then he'll deceive you when it comes to like the will of God. You know, it could be, you know, in a relationship, like especially with young people, that may not be God's will. But they all know we love each other, but they don't really know what love really is. And see, it's kind of like uh, we had a youth pastor years ago at Good News. He always would tell the young boy, you know, the teen, teen, boys and girls, you want to meet the right person, then you be the right person. You be the right person yourself. Be God. And then God will work that out. You know, and trust, trust in Him. But see, he, the devil said, no, 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 you do your own thing. You, you, you know, God is, a, he is he's holding this back from you. He's holding back, he's holding back um, that one thing that you can eat. You can have it. Take it. Go for it, Eve. You're your own person. And I, God shouldn't tell you what to do. I'm my own man. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. Whatever. 
the case may be. And if and that's you see that people are infected, even among Christians, people who are saved, they don't they they want they, they follow their feelings and not their faith. And many times we got we got to look at what God has said and His will, and His will is the best. His wisdom, He's wise. You want wisdom? Look to God, because He is infinite wisdom. And that's what we got to look at, because it is so so easy. The devil can use the circumstances that we're in <coughs> to deceive us. God's word does stand. You know, it's um, during Wednesday night we were listening to. Um, a video about uh, experiencing God and one of the black people he was telling his testimony. He wanted to go to Africa. Well, he felt that God was calling him back. And his wife, they were making preparations. But his, his son got really sick. And the mission board, Southern Baptist Mission Board, said, no, we're going to have to hold off on that right now. Your son's really sick. You need to tend to that. And he said, you might have asked, was I disappointed? And God, he goes, no. But God had another plan. And he ended up going to um, Canada, back to Canada, to preach in the area that they really needed him. But later on in life, he got the opportunity, him and his wife, to go to Africa. See, God, you know, God's timetable is not our timetable. His thoughts are our, His ways are not our ways. We think we know what's best, but God knows what's best. The problem is the devil wants you to think you know what's best. And I tell you, I don't know what's best. Only God does. And he works in mysterious ways and ways that you never could imagine. He does things the way, the way how. Only God could have done that. That's how God works. But the devil doesn't want you to know that. The devil wants you to follow your feelings. And so... That's what the um, that's what the, the sermon he did. You know, he said, "You're not going to die." See how he twisted scripture, though he distorted. See, God, when he said, "You shall die," you will surely die. He's talking about spiritual death right here. And the devil twists this. Oh no 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 no! You're gonna um, you're you're gonna uh, no he's you're not gonna die. Well, in a way, he's you know you're not gonna physically die. Yeah, I mean eventually, but he but. But the thing was, he had deceived and he just he twist the word of God. And did the devil twist the word of God with Jesus? When Jesus went into the wilderness, he said, Yay! You know, if he started drawing scripture, you would take a scripture out of context. And Jesus would come back with a scripture and said, and every time. And the devil left. And I'll tell you one thing, the devil will he knows the he knows the Bible more than you know it. And he can twist it. He can twist the words. I mean, even in, the, even in the simple things, like, for instance, somebody would say, well, you know, money's the root of all evil. Well, no. The love of money's the root of all evil. You know, and how, um, but, or some people might think that the Bible says this. No, it doesn't really say that. But he will twist the truth. He will twist, twist the Word of God. And he will twist the, um, the character of God, who God really is. And God's got a Got the plan, but you know, but the devil wants to twist those, twist those plans. So we see how he did, how he deceived her, and she did eat of the, of the fruit of the tree. And guess what? Her eyes definitely were open, not open the way she thought the devil meant. She knew, felt guilt for the first time. Adam and Eve felt guilt mm -hmm. for the first time. They had never felt guilt before. And because before they would walk with God, there was no guilt. They were naked and they didn't know because they didn't feel guilt. Because sin had not entered into the world. But we see the sin in verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called Adam unto Adam and said, uh, said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid 
I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was, was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shalt, shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to, um, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did it. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is thou that that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Notice, when they commit to sin, their eyes are open, and, and, and the Lord comes in there, and they're, for the first time, they are actually, literally, afraid of God. Because they are in guilt. And they don't, and he, and he goes, Adam, where art thou? God knew what he had done. It wasn't as if God couldn't find Adam. He wanted Adam to find himself. Where are you, Adam? What are you doing? And he said, I hid because I was afraid. I knew I was naked. He said, who told you you were naked? Did you eat of that tree? For the first time, Adam felt what it was like to feel guilt. And so did Eve. Even before God showed up, they sowed fig leaves on themselves to try to hide their sin, to hide their shame, to hide their guilt. And there are many people out there today who are trying to hide that guilt. They're trying to hide that shame. Instead of confessing it and coming to the Lord, they'll try to hide it. Oh, they can, they can come in churches and they look all nice and then, you know, like they, they, they know all the lingo, they know all the things to say, but they're, they're fighting real battles of guilt, having to deal with guilt. And, but God knows. But notice how when they were confronted, how Adam said, it's the woman you gave me. In other words, it's your fault, God. If you hadn't given me that woman, it wouldn't have ever happened. And many people would like we blame our circumstances, really, blaming God. God's in control. He said, that woman. Then he turns to the he turns to the woman and said, What have you done? Oh, the serpent be God. Like Flip Wilson, the devil made him do it. And but that didn't fly. You know, instead of right there confessing it, they try to cover it up. They try to deflect. And that's what a lot of times we do. Hey, we we mess up. I mean, that's that, that's a fact. But we need to confess it. And I tell you, the closer you are, you're walking with the Lord, then every time you do mess up, you are you, it eats you. You're so convicted right there immediately. Or you think something you shouldn't have thought, and the Lord says, Oh, you're out of bounds. And you confess it, repent of it. And and the more closer you are, the more sensitive you are to be to sin. And that's a, I tell you, that is a good thing. That is good. We do live in the fallen world, but if Jesus Christ has saved you. You're more sensitive to the sin, and you can you see, hey, I'm not where I need to be. I need to repent of it. I need to forsake it, and I need to move on. And but a lot of times people will just won't try to they'll try to sidestep it they'll try to try to dance around it and they they won't deal with the real issues that are going on in their life they just try to and they wonder why God won't bless that and we see so many churches are getting with that and people become bitter saying why doesn't God bless me first of all God's not here to bless you <laughs> you know um, God is the blesser. But we need to worship the blesser, not the blessing that God can give you. Amen. Oh, you know, a lot of times people will come to church and say, why is he blessed? I didn't get anything out of it. But what did you get mm, to right. it? What, did you get, what, what did, contribution did you make? Were you glorifying God? Were you looking to the one who can bless you? The one where who can get, who can feed your soul, the one who can who can lift you up, the one who saved you, the one who can who can help you, help you grow, and you look to him. You know, a lot of times people say we need to be our churches need to be seeker friendly. You got to understand, there's only one seeker. His name is God. If we want to be friendly anybody to anybody in our church, it ought to be to God, and not about our 
about our, our petty feelings that we a lot of times have. And a lot of times we just, well, you don't know what I'm feeling. Jeremiah warns us, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately <coughs> wicked. And we can be so easily deceived. You know, we see what the devil does, but a lot of times the devil doesn't have to do anything. Because we, we still fight that flesh. We still fight the world. There's so many things out there that we're, that we're fighting. But we see, you know, Adam blamed God. Eve, Eve played, um, you know, blamed the devil. And as, the, as, as one preacher had said, the devil, when he turned to the devil, the devil didn't have a leg to stand on. But, you know, this is what happened with the devil here. And then the Lord, God said unto the servant, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly thou shalt go, and, and, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now listen. The devil, the origin of the devil, he was, he was Lucifer, the son of the morning. He was an angel, and, and he, wanted to, he wanted to be God. And God kicked him and his followers, the demons, out of heaven. But he just aggravated his own guilt right here. And so he says, and really, the serpent was something that the devil commandeered. But you, you know, some of the even speculate, I was, um, one of my teachers, Dr. Garnett, were even at the Bible college. He was a New Testament, Old Testament scholar. And he, he had even suggested that we see the judgment on the snakes, on the serpent, because they're always on their belly. And also that he goes, now this, I know this is a stretch, so this is like they say, it doesn't cost you anything. What noise do they make? For sin. Um, but, but anyway, death had entered in the world. You had spiritual death and obviously you had physical death. But notice in verse 15 what he said. And I will put enmity between thee and thy woman and, the, and between thy seed and, and her seed and it shall bruise thy heel. And thou shalt, thou shalt, I mean, bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let's talk about Jesus. Because he, immediately, the Lord made a promise that he would send his son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world, born of a virgin, who would, who would live a sinless life, who would, who would die by carrying death on the cross, and who would bodily, on the third day, rise from the dead. He made that promise. And he and 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 the death and the devil's fate was sealed here, because the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, and even the devil himself will bow down before Jesus Christ and call him Lord. And you know that that is encouraging when we know that what God has done. And what we're going through, what we what you experience in your life, I mean, we have we have difficulties, we have illnesses, we have sickness, we have financial problems, we have relational problems, and all, you, you can go on and on. Because we live in a sin-cursed world. I asked at the very beginning, what is the worst tragedy that ever happened? This is it right here, what happened when sin entered into the world. But praise God, if He's going to set things right. He sent His Son into the world. And Jesus is coming back again. And He is going to come back and judge this world in righteousness. And that is encouraging. God is in control. Amen. Even in the midst of all this, Adam and Eve made a, made a wrong choice. But God knew that. He knew that they, um, He already had a plan. He knew that they were going to do that. Now that doesn't justify them doing it. God didn't make them do it like some Calvinists would try to say that God made them do it. God didn't make them do it. They made that choice. But you got to remember, the devil, he's God's devil. And the devil, the devil's not sovereign. And he was uh, looser and he was created by God. 
they got out of God's will and obviously rebelled in heaven and in his faith is sealed. But the thing about that is God's in control. He is in complete control. And the devil is restrained from what he can do. But when the great tribulation does happen, the Bible teaches that that restraint will be removed for a season. You think things are bad now? It really get bad, but hopefully if you take the pre-tribulation view, pre-trib rapture, we won't be here when that happens. Now, I'm not going to be dogmatic about that. We need to be prepared, but I'll tell you what. We haven't seen nothing yet. We haven't seen nothing that the devil's going to do, but we haven't seen nothing. We, the best is yet to come for all believers. If you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the best is yet to come. We're going to see that everything is going to be made right, and he, that Jesus Christ will come into this world, and He will, and he will judge the, the devil, the, the Antichrist, and all his demons. And the devil will be cast into the lake of fire. Which was cast, but there, unfortunately, there will be people who will be cast in there with them because they believed the lie. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't accept Jesus. And that's our job. God has put us here on this earth is to share the gospel with people. Is to pray for them. Now, it's not our job to save them. God does to save them, but we need to be faithful with His with His work. A friend of mine, Paul Trout, he always be in tears. What a privilege it is that God would trust us with this book. Amen. And we could share it with someone. And because what a privilege that is. And you know, and, and Jesus had told, remember when he sent the 70 out, they said, demons are subject to us and everything. He said, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice in this, that your names are written in the book of life. That your, that your home's in heaven. That's what you want to rejoice about. All these other things, that's just the icing on the cake. But the cake is knowing that you're going to be with Him forever. And so, remember, while we, while we face what we face right now, a lot of times we forget. We live in a fallen world. Unfair things are going to happen. That's just the way it is. But God's still in control. And Paul knew that. And he says, whatever state I am, I'm in. I've learned this. To be content. He says, I am, you know, I may I, I have learned how to be a base and I have learned how to obey. To be full and to suffer need. But I can do all things through Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for each one in here. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the reminders that you give us all. That Lord, that we live in a fallen world. But Lord, you have the remedy. You sent your Son to die for us. And I thank you for that. Thank you for taking the punishment that I deserve, that we all deserve, and you put it upon our, on yourself. And Lord, that you rose again from the dead, and you are coming again. And Lord, you've given us your word, and we can really live the abundant life in you while we're still here on this earth. Well, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to run to the back, Bill, maybe we can preach on the way out. And I, I've said this before, we, we know the things that are in the Bible. And I think sometimes we just get going in our daily lives and some of the things we do forget. And so, the story of Adam and Eve, that we rekindle that, we understand what it means. And uh, that again, we can be on the lookout for the devil, but he doesn't get in their way because he's looking for that little crack that he can squeeze into to ruin our lives. He's there. And so, I uh, want well, thank Brother Bill for that. Appreciate him coming and being with us. Thank you all for being here today, uh, being prayer for the church, of course, or being in prayer for the pulpit committee. I'm going to hopefully get everybody together this week if we can and uh, see what God has for us and where we need to go. But continue to pray. And uh, that God will have His will and He will bring us the shepherd that we need here. So if you all need anything during the week, please give me a call. And um, we will certainly do what we can. So again, thank you for being here. Uh, 
Brother Ron, would you close us out today? Lord, you've reminded us again mm -hmm. that we're not alone. You're always with us. But then there's that shadow that hangs over us too. Sin. But God, you reminded us as well that sin is a choice. A choice that we make. Help us, God. Help us to make the right choices. That we will look to you for guidance. And that you will let you lead us. That we might be more pleasing in your sight. We'll be more like what you want us to be and less of what we are. We give ourselves to you now, God. Let us always love you supremely and be good to each other. In Jesus' name, amen.